Hey folks, good morning and welcome to this special edition MC Commute coming to you live from the official U.S. press introduction of Yamaha's all new 2022 YZFR7. Now, this YZFR7 is a new super sport style motorcycle that effectively replaces, on paper, but not in spirit, Yamaha's YZF R6, which was retired for the 2020 model year due to cost and low sales. Now, this YZF R7 is an everyday man's sport bike designed for riders who want to step up from Yamaha's YZF-R3, but aren't ready for the performance and of course the price of Yamaha's YZF-R1 and YZF-R1M. But enough talking about this R7, let's swing a leg over it and tell you what it's like to ride. Well folks, there it is, Yamaha's 2022 YZF R7. This motorcycle features Yamaha's tried and true 689cc parallel twin. It has a steel frame with a preload and rebound adjustable shock and an inverted front fork with spring preload compression and rebound damping adjustment. What does everyone think of the styling on this motorcycle? I love the signature Yamaha R styling bits like these fish gills that come off the YZR M1 MotoGP bike. I like this seat. The seat looks awfully similar to the YZF R6, but it's a little bit thicker. There is room for a passenger if you want to bring a passenger. Nice sharp LED lights. I love that. Under slung exhaust, another signature. R6 style styling point, clip-on style bars below the top clamp. This is a cast gravity top clamp while the bottom clamp is of forged alloy. Yamaha did that so the bike has good rigidity balance and feel when it's leaned over in a turn. What does everyone think of this YZF R7? Let's swing a leg over it and tell you what it's like to ride. All right, folks, here we are riding Yamaha's 2022 YZF R7 at the official US press introduction for this vehicle at Atlanta Motorsports Park in the Peach State. Now, this 2022 YZF R7 is all stock besides the Bridgestone Batlax R11 competition specification dot labeled race tires. So those tires are on this bike. This motorcycle also is outfitted with Yamaha's GYTR accessory quick shifter right there. So we can shift gears without having to use the clutch. There's our buddy 650 Eve on YouTube. Check him out. He's got great content. The street racing is kind of uh, for me, but everything else is great. So this is Yamaha's new Super Sport. Let's start her up and go. There are no power modes, traction control, nothing. All we have is ABS, so it's pretty easy to set the bike up. You just turn it on and go, and away we go. This motorcycle is powered by Yamaha's tried and true 689cc CP2 parallel twin. This engine was introduced seven years ago or six years ago for the 2015 model year with the FZ07 turned MT07. So this engine is so awesome because it is compact. It's small and it produces the majority of its torque from as low as 3500 RPM all the way to redline. Now at the business 
end of this tire, it produces 67 horsepower at the 180 series Bridgestone tire. Now, that's not a lot of power. The outgoing YZFR6 made right around 100, you know, with a pipe and some grace gas to get that thing to 120. So this motorcycle is certainly not the fastest, but what it lacks in terms of sheer speed, it ma makes up for in how easy it is to ride. I like that this motorcycle steers so well. It's really easy to put it where you want on track. I also like that when you're turning this motorcycle, you can really easily make mid-corner adjustments. You can steer a little bit, you can tighten up the turn, you can go also go a little bit wide, and this motorcycle does it very easily. Now, it's worth noting that Yamaha didn't just steal the MT-07 chassis. They did some very careful modifications to it to make sure that it handles like a real uh, sport bike. And I like the handling of this bike. Again, I love the way it steers. It offers good stability and speed. And I can't just say it enough, easy to ride is what this bike is all about. Suspension. Now the suspension on this motorcycle, it's a tad soft for my taste, but it's not so soft that it's limiting my ability to ride this motorcycle at a decent clip and have fun on it. The fork offers spring preload, compression, and dampening position adjustment, which is a nice touch so you can tweak the action of the fork to your liking. The shock, on the other hand, offers spring preload and rebound damping, damping adjustment only. So there is a little bit of suspension tunability for riders that want to dial in the way the motorcycle pitches and moves. Instrumentation. This motorcycle has this cool LCD backlit display. Now, I like this instrument panel, but the gear shift indicator, gear position indicator could be a little bit bigger. It's a little hard to see what gear you're in. Right now I'm in the wrong gear. I should have been in fifth gear, but I will do that turn. But it's okay. Because we're still having fun. Brakes. Triple disc hydraulic brakes slow this bike down. The brakes are definitely effective at shedding speed on this 414 pound YZF R7. For reference, the R6 weighed 5 pounds more at 419. Isn't that crazy they were able to get that 4 cylinder bike and have it so light? Unbelievable. So, the brakes do a good job of slowing this bike down. They're not super bike, they're not modern super bike brakes by any means. But, they're effective and ABS always on ABS mitigates any wheel instability during brake application. So, and to be honest, at this pace, even at this elevated pace, I haven't felt the ABS intervene all day. But to be fair, we're not really going fast enough to need to just be jamming on the brakes like you would on a big bike that made a ton of power. I love this section of turns. It's fun just to like pull this thing wide and just run her through the gearbox. I love that sensation. Ergonomics. I am six foot tall and I fit quite nicely on this bike. I blew that turn too, sorry guys. I fit quite nicely on this bike. The windscreen is tall enough for me to tuck in behind and be out of the wind. The foot pegs are 
low enough to give me good comf comfort when I ride in this bike, but they're not so low that they're gonna touch down on the pavement through turns. The seat is nice and thick. Generally, you don't want a thick seat for track riding. You want the thinnest seat possible so you can have good rear tire and shock feel. But I bet you anything that this seat will be really comfortable for street riding. Of course, during this press introduction, we're not going to do any street riding. It's just a one day track ride. But from initial impressions, this motorcycle is pretty dang comfortable. Electronics. This motorcycle is not fitted with any form of electronics. There's no traction control, no adjustable power mode throttle response. And I'm not going to hold that against Yamaha. I mean, for $9,000, it's okay that it doesn't come with electronics. And this motorcycle is so easy to ride that it almost doesn't even need electronics. Just the way the power the power band, how friendly it is, how easy this thing steers. The, the, the riding dynamic is so well calibrated that it almost it removes the need for electronics. And when it comes to it, I'd rather have a really balanced, easy, ride, easy to ride bike that has a good dynamic over a bike with bad dynamic and electronics to help it be better. So we're not going to strike Yamaha for not having the electronics. Maintenance. Now, aside from the initial 600 mile service, this motorcycle requires oil changes every 4,000 miles and oil filter changes every 8,000 miles. Valve adjustment or valve inspection is at 26,600 miles. That's crazy. 26,600 miles you can travel on this vehicle before the valves need to be inspected. It's a great feat. I really like this CP2 engine. It's just easy to ride, good torquey feel. Even though this bike doesn't sound nearly as awesome as a YZF R6 or YZF R1. You can feel a little bit of Yamaha or pedigree inside the engine cases a little bit. Now, for some, the fact that this motorcycle is named YZF R7 is going to be sacrilegious. The original YZF R7 was a limited edition superbike 750cc inline four superbike made for the 1999 model year but yamaha they wanted to name it the yzf r7 because they didn't think people were going to buy it if they didn't if you guys remember the fz6r from back in the day that thing it's a nice bike but it didn't really sell personally I would have named it MT7R. MT7R is what I would have named this bike just because I'm a diehard sport bike guy and that Yamaha YZF R7 nameplate is just that should go down in history. But it is what it is and that's why this bike is called the YZF R7. All right folks that about does it for today's MC commute. Let's pull in to the paddock, wrap things up, and we'll talk to you guys later. Well, folks, that was a fun day riding Yamaha's 2022 YZFR7. This bike is a fun little sport bike for riding at medium sized tracks. It just has enough power to excite you but it doesn't have so much power where it's going to scare you. This bike is crazy nimble. It's crazy nimble, and I love the ability, the easy ability to steer and make 
mid-corner trajectory changes. This bike handles very nicely. Yeah, the suspension's a little soft, a little fast, but for whaling around a medium speed track, it is a fun bike. If you got a bunch of friends with these bikes and you got out to a track day and were able to battle, I think you would have a good time. Of course, this bike having the YZF R7 nameplate, I'm not a fan of that. I think the YZF R7, the 1999 model, should go down in history. And I wouldn't have used that name for this bike. I probably would have called it the MT-7R. But I get why Yamaha named it the R7. Their customers want R-spec bikes. They want the styling of the R6 and R1 and YZR M1 MotoGP bike. And I get it. But for $9,000, it's a nice sport bike. It handles very well. It's got good power. It fits a six foot tall rider very well. And if you're looking for a bike, a new bike that you can have some fun on and it's not gonna break the bank, this vehicle is a good option. All right, folks, that's a wrap from the official US press introduction of the 2022 YZF-R7 give this video a thumbs up if you liked it thumbs it down if you didn't check out motorcyclistonline.com for all of my written review and we'll see you folks next time thanks for watching